Does anyone want to dance? Welcome to the third part of the Blender tutorial. Today we're going to be learning about how to create a mesh. So what we're doing now is in texture mode we're going to click just above the aircraft. That will move the small reticle just above it. And at that point what you're going to do is hit spacebar, add, and then whatever shape it is that you wish we're going to just use a circle. As by default it lays down flat. We're going to press N to bring up the little box there that'll let you orient it and change the axis to 90 degrees so it's upright now. So let's pan and just kind of look to see what we're looking at. Okay, so we have a flat kind of box, or excuse me, a flat square shape that we're going to be uh, working with. Um, there's a lot of other shapes that would be pretty useful, circles, uh, etc. Now, what we've done is we've switched to edit mode, and those keys there at the bottom will let you toggle between face, line, and point mode. And I've just now selected point mode, and I'm shift right clicking to select three of them. And I can do whatever I want. I can move them, uh, or I just erase them. And now there is one point left, and this is usually the common pattern to what I do to start a insignia or roundel, whatever it is that you would like. Um, just start with one point. And what we do then is we click that single or right click on that single point to position it where we'd like. That larger dot is the center of the object. So we hit Shift D to duplicate and left click to place the points where we would where we would like to have them. So here we are now placing the points uh, wherever it is that we would like to. And I'm just creating a star. Um, putting the points at every single corner uh, where where they would actually be on the star. So this is the beginning or the kind of the groundwork that we lay to, to develop a mesh. In developing the mesh we right click and shift hold and select four points at a time. So I've got three selected. Um, if you just select two it'll create a line and you just hit F. F will create a face or a polygon. So we have a face there and we can connect and create another face hitting F. Now you'll notice that the face here is kind of a purplish pink color. What that means is that the normals or the normal of that face or that polygon is flipped. So what we do is we want to flip it or make the color appear on the other side. And that's done uh, I'll insert the function and make that happen later. I'm sorry, I forgot what the key was to, to do that. So we're just going to go through really quick and finish making all these different faces. And it goes fairly quick. Uh, the more complex of an insignia that you wish to have, the more polygons, obviously, that it takes to, to do so. So there we have it. In edit mode, we have created a uh, multi-polygon or multi-faced object or in essence this is its own uh, SRF or surface and you can tweak and adjust point by point if you wish. What I've done is just right clicked on the point and the uh, arrows for orientation show up. I've switched to object mode now and now I can move the entire shape or the insignia uh, wherever I wish or now I can color it. So we're just going to switch it to vertex paint, choose the color that we wish the mask is off, or excuse me, on, so, uh, well, either way, we want all the polygons painted. Uh, see the first tutorial for an explanation on that. So back to object mode now, and we are going to enlarge it. <coughs> by pressing S for scale, and the line appears that will kind of let you drag it out to, to stretch it. And we now move it over. Now in three-dimensional space that was created in the in the center but uh, we've just moved it back along the x-axis and now we're going to move it along the y and you'll notice as it passes through the tail fin of this uh, aircraft 
it's very flat. It doesn't really look like there is much of a need to shrink wrap it at all. So we're going to go ahead and forego that step. If you want to learn how to shrink wrap, see the second tutorial that I've posted. What we've noticed in a lot of aircraft uh, that I've been painting and worked on is that insignias go over areas uh, such as rudders uh, of aircraft that bend and move. So what we're going to show you now is I'm cycling through with just the regular arrow keys, the uh, different keyframes or the mo motions of the aircraft, and you'll see how the rudder there on the right is moving in and out, and it actually cuts through the insignia. What we want to do is have that part of the insignia follow that portion of the rudder. So back to, uh, we're in object mode, we're going to right click, we have, a, our, we have our object selected. Let's have a look and see now with wireframe, follow the mouse there, where it is that we need to cut that shape. So now we're looking at the shape and we see that edge right there of where it is that the rudder bends and moves. That's the basically the hinge of it. And we're going to cut our shape that way. We're still in point or excuse me, edit mode, and we're selecting points. Either way, we're going to cut this whole thing. So I just hit A in edit mode to select all of it, K to cut, and I'm just going to trace the outline of that rudder with just a single slice, and it's going to cut all those polygons of the star. And I've left click to end it, enter, and now we've created a slice through it. And what I'd like to do now is go back to textured mode to, to look at our, our object. You can see the new kind of polygons that have been created. Let's switch to face selection mode right there at the bottom middle part of your toolbar. And we're going to shift, hold, and right click to select all those different polygons. And now we're going to hit control P, or excuse me, just P to separate those polygons that were selected. Now you see that they don't show up. It has actually become its own SRF. So here in object mode I can select either part. Here's the portion we cut and the portion that is uh, left whole or that's uh, remaining. So now it is its its own uh, surface or its, uh, its own um, object. Now we as we've right clicked on that part of the star and we shift hold and right click now on that rudder we are ready now to parent so we go to mesh or excuse me in object mode object parent make parent meaning we want the star to follow the rudder and click OK Now when we cycle through the keyframes, the rudder is going to move and that portion of the star is going to follow it just the way it should or as though you had uh, painted it on there.